Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio. Today I'm sharing with you days 16 and day 17 of our hashtag AJOS ATC a day 2022 challenge over at Art Joy of Sharing Art Community. That is making an artist trading card each day um, in the month of June 2022. So this is day 16 and 17. We also have some prompts for surfaces that you might use and for today, uh, I've got metal and I've got wallpaper. Those are the two surface prompts, and that hashtag is AJOS Surfaces in Art. That's our theme for the month using uh, different types of substrates besides just your classic canvas or wood or paper. So I'm starting out with this, um, this piece of a soda can, soda pop pop, whatever you call it, <laughs> you know, that type of stuff. And it's, it's aluminum. It's a piece of metal. It's been cut to three and a half by two and a half inches, which is the size of an artist trading card. And I have this uh, squishy pad that was originally, um, it was for paper piercing for poking holes, but it's great for this. Um, a good substitute if you don't have this thing is a mouse pad, you know, kind of a thick, foamy, squishy, rubbery thing and that gives give when you're pressing down and allows you to do uh, some pressure embossing embossing means to make raised right so you're you're causing a material to have a raised and a and a um, depressed surface so if you press on metal with something um, then that makes that portion of the metal stand up from the rest of it because it's a malleable thing. Um, this is the same idea as um, putting paper in one of those folders and then running it through your die cut machine. That makes a pressure embossed surface. Also, of course, you can emboss with paste. You can emboss with um, powder and heat it up. Just making raised is what embossed means. So that's what I'm doing on this metal. I have some different stencils and I was showing how you could use the stencils to make the shapes. You can also obviously freehand it and uh, I was doing a little bit of that. I was doing some squiggly lines and just all over this making a surface that's raised and not raised so that it's kind of interesting. Then I thought well I could also punch holes in it uh, using the hole punching tool um, and we were talking about those really cool lanterns that uh, you can buy in Mexico that are punched tin and they can have different shapes or you could even make them out of like a, uh, a aluminum can, um, you know, like the can that comes with beans and you punch holes and then you can put a tea light in there and it makes a lantern. Um, cool, really cool stuff. I like those. I like the ones that are shaped like stars, like three dimensional stars. So once I was done with that, then I was talking about okay, what if this thing was going to get something pressed on it? It would push those areas that I've pressed out back in, right? If it had pressure on it. So if that really matters, you can fill in those depressions with something that's going to dry hard. And probably I think the best choice and the cheapest choice if you were going to do this a lot would be something like uh, wood spackling because it really does dry hard. But I just used um, molding paste and then uh, filled it up and then scraped it with a card. So now on the back, all those little depressions that I created with the stylus tool are now filled up. So when that, that dries, they can't be squished. You know what I'm saying? They can't be squished. I didn't really need to do this for an artist trading card, but I figured I would show you. Uh, that's what you would do if, like, say you were making something like a book cover or um, something that you cared whether or not that the, the areas that you took the time to emboss got squished or not. And by the way, I don't think I said the tool I was using is a ball stylus. It has like a little metal ball and they come in different sizes on the end, a ball shape, not like something that rolls around. And that's what you use. You don't use something pointed because you can punch through the metal unintentionally. 
So then on the edges, I glued it down a little bit with some glue. I was I was counting on that molding paste to stick it to a, um, a card that I put on the back, but uh, the, the edges were coming up a little bit. So I just put a little glue in there to make sure that it was good and stuck down. And uh, that's watercolor card on the back. Um, I didn't want to get stabbed by the little metal because, you know, I had punched some holes. I didn't want to get stabbed by the metal on the back. Then the other thing I did was use a sanding block to sand around the edges and make sure they're not sharp. You want to dull down the edges to don't want to get stabbed. <laughs> so then I decided to paint the whole thing with black gesso and then use a sanding block and sand back some of the gesso and it makes the the metal shine through um, and you really get an interesting look this way you wouldn't have to do this this is just one option of something you can do with one of these metal pieces that you've embossed um, if you like it also you can color it with alcohol ink alcohol ink would be your best choice because it's it's designed to work with something that's non-porous, which metal is non-porous. So you can color with alcohol ink. And in fact, I did after I shined back with the, with the sanding block so that there was metal exposed. Then I went and put three different colors of alcohol ink on there and colored up those shiny areas that, so that they're no longer silver colored. Just for fun. Originally, I was just going to color it with alcohol ink, and I thought, you know, I'm going to do some, I'm going to make it more dramatic by adding the black gesso. So that's what I'm doing here. I got to get it dried. Uh, I think I dried it, yep, yeah, at some point. <laughs> so now it's got a lot of black, and then it's got little areas of interest where um, there's some color. shining through or over or something. <laughs> so then after that was good to dry because I had to, I touched it and then I pulled some of the gesso off with my finger. Um, I sanded a little bit more just to, to uh, pop out some more silver highlights. Then I had this magazine picture and it had a piece of chain, like heavy chain, along with a screw thread that I thought I mean, it's metal, you know, we're talking about metal, right? Heavy metal. <laughs> okay, the prompt isn't heavy metal. <laughs> so I, I wanted to put that on there, I thought. So I trimmed it out and cut away, you know, the excess stuff. And then I put that across there. This would have been much more dramatic if I hadn't put the black gesso on. My original plan had been to not put the black gesso. So it's not as dramatic as it could have been. But you can still see it in the end, especially in the close-up pictures, you can see it. So I'm using a soft gloss gel. I sealed the whole thing with it, then I used that to put the magazine image on there to glue it down. Gave it a good dry, trimmed it down so that uh, everything is still two and a half by three and a half inches. Grunged it up a little bit with the, the sanding block again. So I thought it still needed something. I found a little word that says seize the moment and inside my head I was thinking seize, seize up, motors, seize up, metal, motors, you know. <laughs> weird kind of stuff. Anyway, that's the reason I picked Seize the Moment, if you are wondering how my crazy brain works. Then I, I was looking for some other metal stuff I might put on there, and I just decided not to use them, but um, I had some, you know, metal mini brads and different stuff like that, paper fasteners. But I did find this paper butterfly, and I decided to dye it with the same colors of alcohol ink that I used and then put that on. So that was my final choice. It's like, oh, do I want to use any of these? The, the thing about the, the paper fasteners or brads as they're called, 
is that they're going to poke through and then you're going to have this little thing on the back. And I've already put a backing on there and I didn't want to put another backing on it to cover up the things that poke through. So then I thought maybe I'd cut them off and just use the tops of the brads and just glue them on. But I'm like, eh, ugh, sounds like too much work. <laughs> so I ended up not putting them on after all. Got on my white Posca pen, added some highlights to some things to give a little bit of definition uh, to my butterfly, to the little uh, chain and uh, screw threads that were on there. I thought maybe it would be better if I put some highlights. This car should not have taken me as long as it did, but I was just going really slow and messing around. This was during the Art Joy of Sharing live stream show today, which is an hour and a half long, and you know, I wasn't in a hurry. So this is the speed up version of that. So then I think I am done with this one. I did some white splatter. And this is number 16, which was metal. So there you go. Here's the close-ups. It was fun messing around with the different techniques. Next one is wallpaper. This is textured wallpaper. So it has a kind of a rubbery raised surface, embossed surface. And I thought it might be kind of fun to maybe make some printed paper with it. So I'm using my um, some heavy body acrylic paint and a brayer and just, you know, inking it up as if it is a stamp. And I thought maybe I would mess with it that way. So that's what I started out doing. I was making some different colors of paint here, mixing lime and olive to make kind of an, a bright olive. And that's pretty cool. And I will, of course, save those pieces for later. But I decided not to use them after all. I decided to use just the actual wallpaper itself. So I have a... Uh, a die cut oval that's two and a half by three and a half, which yes, you can make your ATCs in different, pat, you know, different forms other than a rectangle, as long as it fits within a baseball card sleeve, which is two and a half by, you know, a two and a half by three and a half. Can't be any bigger than that, so you got to be careful about that. But it could be that size, so I decided to glue the wallpaper on there and trim out around the edge. So now I have an oval ATC shape. And then I decided I wanted to paint it. So because, you know, I got that other paint on there, I've got to cover up that other paint that I was using for printing. So I decided to use metallic copper acrylic paint. Copper is the best metallic, in my opinion. <laughs> and I could also still, you know, make it make a stamped pattern with it because while it was wet, so I was pretty happy with that, all copper, and I dried it. And then I thought, well, I need to uh, antique it a little bit. So I got some archival ink in ground espresso color. And I went around the edges. I went over the top of the raised areas with the ink pad. And that made it a lot more interesting and dramatic to have the, you know, the edges I think I did a little bit of black too. Got to dry that. <laughs> then I thought, well, it needs a little bit of color variation because now it's just not, it's just copper, right? What am I going to do? So I decided to get out some PBO Dyna. Um, those are like pearly acrylic paints, metallic -y, pearly shimmery acrylic paints, and a little tiny brush. And I painted in where the depressions are on the wallpaper where it goes in. I painted around and then um, left the highlighted parts, the you know the up raised up parts, uh, with the dramatic color on them. So it's still copper, but it's also green, it's also pink, and it's also turquoise. And this was really fun.
and it's still very you know shiny and shimmery and pretty I think I ended up getting back out the ink pad and darkening up the the raised areas again one more time maybe I don't know what I'm doing right now <laughs> talking I'm talking there's a lot of talking going on during the live stream so then I'm like okay now what well I had these paper flowers on my desk and I just decided to use them <laughs> it's like they've been sitting there for a while so they happen to be the right colors for what I put in the background which is kind of a limey green and a, a purpley pink color and I used a copper mini brad for the center and then I got out one of these sparkle pins and added some sparkle um, that's from Spectrum Noir and it's got a clear ink with mica in it because they seemed very flat the paper seemed very flat in comparison to the shimmery paints so I did that glued that on added a word and I think this one was pretty much done after that so I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have please remember to give me a thumbs up leave me a comment or a question below subscribe if you haven't already um, you guys can always join my channel and get exclusive content it just came out yesterday actually and you can also see the previous months by clicking that little join button that's always fun here I am gluing on the word uh, what was the word outstanding outstanding <laughs> so anyway yeah 16 and 17 metal and wallpaper thanks you guys for watching and that's it for me bye bye <laughs>